Oh yeah? Fuck you guys, I'm siding with the English now. And we start with revenge. I was just having a good time there and told them Oasis is the worst band to ever exist and Wonderwall is the biggest piece of garbage to ever be called music. I don't think that's enough to get me kicked out. So let's hire some Saxons to deal with these entitled thirds. And as soon as they arrived in their Hagia Sophia here in England, we start organizing the stump we can- My god, do they have to pollute my screen like this? We can roll past Hadrian's walls. Yes, the great Hadrian. Because even though the game says Britain, we're kinda Roman here. Which means everyone fucking hates us. So we have to take matters into our own hands and show these barbarian savages how the empire rolls. Or at least what's left of us, cause it's the 5th century and the capital has been raided by everyone and stuff, but that doesn't matter, we're here on a mission. Defending the beautiful walls of a beautiful Hadrian, dealing with the fake degenerates and making sure England survives until the year 500 CE. I have tried playing this scenario in all difficulties and apparently beating Pachacuti on hard doesn't translate into defending England on hard. Or even moderate. So we're going back to the toilet here, right where we belong. Wait, is that... It can't be. Mel Gibson. I watched some folks beating this, and it seems like fighting the picks early makes the scenario a lot more manageable, so we roll around the highlands with a boner for picked blood. Or in this case, a boner for fallworks. I don't think this was thought to be the intended way to play the scenario, because the land past Hadrian's walls is as barren as a 90 year old woman. At least it's easy to find the fallworks lost around the area, and our villagers work hard to reinforce this corner. You may think, why this corner? And this is why. Every enemy comes from here for some reason. They just love this little bay. Picked's dealt with, one less pain in the buttocks to worry about. It's what you get for kicking me out when I'm just trying to have a good time. Roman Britannia starts making its way toward the castle age with more fortifications being built around the barbarian landing zone. The legion arrives in the walls, but we take a little detour to bitch slap Mel Gibson a bit. Maybe this way he stops being homophobic, or racist, or anti-semite, or hitting his wife, or drunk driving. Boy, he's just not that good of a person, isn't he? The Saxons are getting quite comfortable around here. I wonder how long until they backstab me. I'll bring the legion to their borders, just to be sure. Oh my god, look at the tiny church, where a tiny priest touches a tiny kid. This is ugly as shit, but I don't think of a better solution for what's to come. I mean, Imperial Age will surely help because we're Romans, our strength is in... You know, strength, not numbers. But more towers have never hurt anyone. Oh, Jesus Christ, maybe moving the legion wasn't the smartest idea. Yeah, I don't think I built enough towers for this. You're late, now the towers have dealt with the threat. I should probably use this barracks, since they're here and have been built for this purpose. That's just fucking perfect. More towers, that's what we need. Couldn't they have waited a bit longer to come a second time? Oh god, this is so annoying, am I gonna have to close off the shore with towers? Why are they being like this? Don't they know life is so much better under the SPQR? SPQR? The Legion arrives late to the party once again, and our brave builder goes back to playing tower defense. This time, since we're better prepared, the Franks decide to skip the fight and just run somewhere inland. Someone else's problem, we have towers to build. Only 17 years left of this and the Saxons bullshit became so transparent you could use it as glass. Not that I'm complaining. Another raid starts, but we're better prepared this time and not a single tower falls. A great sign for us to start focusing on the little treason issue brewing out east. Yeah, I think the champions can take care of the area here. I'm on to you, Saxons. Don't think any shenanigans will be taken lightly. Just look at the Picts. Exactly, you can't, because they're dead. There's nothing more satisfying than using infantry to sink a full transport ship. The stinging betrayal starts, and like cockroaches, the Saxons are swiftly crushed by the mighty boot of the Empire. Rome may have fallen, but the Roman spirit is still here to stomp their necks. With just three years left, we stick around Saxon lands to fulfill this nice piece of alternate history. Because sadly, in real life, the Saxons took over the island and ruled it until the Vikings showed up some 300 years later. But we dream. We dream of a Roman victory in 1 hour and 57 seconds. Alright, a solid time for us to start our English adventures today. And while we get ready for the second act, how about we take a look at the war crime of the week? Here we can see our very own Georgeman using some prisoners of war for his siege engineers to practice their trebuchet aim. The vote was unanimous, and for this beauty, you will receive the prize of two one-way tickets to The Hague, so you can bring a friend of your choosing to watch the show. Reminiscing of Roman England was all fine and dandy, but after peace and prosperity came anarchy. Our second stop is with Stephen, the only man who can put an end to the madness caused by a ship losing a fight to a rock. The year is 1135, and like, shit's just crazy in England. A boat with all the royalty sank off the coast, and now we need to capture 10 castles, because that just makes sense. 
we start not being able to do anything and then dragged around to see all the usurpers of the throne. Empress Matilda south of the Thames, a runoff of Chester in the middle of the country, and the Crayon Eater, King David of Scotland of North. Cute holdings, but I have the Tower of London. Like Vortigern, I've played this before and know there's no time to waste, so we march straight towards Rainoff's unprotected castle. He may look suicidal to besiege a Sicilian castle with 8 troops, but we are as careful as a guy wearing 2 condoms, brought monks to heal away the wounds and there's also the fact that none of them thought about researching murder holes. We can just poke it with spears, it'll take some time, so be back to this. Meanwhile we can focus on finding pieces of Jesus' puzzle, reaching Castle Age and reinforcing Southwark. Just like Vortigern, we are Britons, but not really, and our unique unit is the Knight, while Longbowmen are trained in the archery ranges. The first castle is liberated, and we begin training more of these sexy knights immediately. A siege workshop is ordered also, because I refuse to fight castles without siege weapons for the whole scenario. If you wonder why I stuck to standard difficulty for this, here is why. The enemies just throw bodies at you for the whole scenario. It's pretty wild, even on moderate. With some knights joining the fight against anarchy, we roll towards Matilda's holdings starting with this pesky dungeon just blocking the way. The land is mine to rule, so I will refurbish how I please, thank you very much. We arrive at the second castle and the rams start doing their work on the walls and then on the castle, which seems to be completely unprotected. Oh boy, we have another Jacqueline in our hands, don't we? Second castle is captured as we get raided by the sheep shaggers and the southeast is virtually secured for Stephen. More knights are ordered and we start planning a light cavalry division to compensate for the horrible gold income. The map is really pretty in this scenario, the Roman ruins add a lot of beauty to it. We roll up to yet another one of Matilda's castles, and as the rams arrive, a gate mosh pit starts. The knights run in to deal with the dungeon, but get distracted by the archers and monks, honestly, the most frustrating thing to fight against. However, both gates and dungeon fall, and the rams slowly crawl towards the castle. Oh my god, I am going to waterboard this woman when I find her. She is just the worst, but really good writing here. Ah yes, historians call this the Great Battle of London Bridge of 1135. Down in Southampton, the monk sinks pushed by salt and pepper to heal the knights while the rams make their way, and once that's done, we march on to take the city from the hands of the uterus of doom. I'd love to go fuck around with the potato eaters, but that's not the priority now. Making Matilda suffer is the priority, and with another castle falling, we inch closer to beheading her. On to the next one. Wait, let me just check on London. Normal stabbings in the south of the city, nothing happening in the north, okay, we can move on to Plymouth. Ugh, I really don't like these dungeons everywhere. But it's probably a bit better enemy to fight than Hobbit Deers. Why can't they just accept I'm their leader? None of this would have to happen. Oh yeah, we're coming for you, Matilda. Get that neck ready. Oh yeah, I forgot about these guys in Ireland. They're still not my priority. England is still a shit show, and I haven't beheaded Matilda yet. Wow, they really hate this dungeon. Like the little bitch she is, Matilda hides behind gates and a sea of longbowmen, but we dance until the rams arrive. Sadly the gates are within castle fire range, and by the time the gates drop, the siege is no more, and I definitely don't want to deal with whatever the fuck that priest convention over there is. While we wait for reinforcements, I decide to take a look at Ireland, and upon realizing it's a dump with nothing useful to offer at first sight, decide to pretend it doesn't exist until I can be fully English and do a little genocide. Oh no, Mitsumias, you can't joke about that. Why? It's a historical game, it's only fair to do what they did. But it's just a joke. Like any normal person, I would never let the whole country starve to death and point fingers at others for doing the same cough cough. Anyway, we roll towards Matilda again a bit better prepared and start pounding at their eastern gates purely out of laziness to walk around. The biggest problem here is not even the castle, but the sea of archers poking me and then fucking running away from me. But the castle falls and Matilda can suck a buffet of dicks. With a brand new foothold towards the rest of Britain, we prepare for the next sieges and recover the five pieces of Jesus' exodia. No time to waste and we march on because Ranulf and David being quiet doesn't mean they're not getting glass for this anarchic bullshit. Luckily they didn't get the memo that we were at war and decided to not defend at all, and one by one the fortresses start falling into Stephen's rough but sweet royal hands. You may think that's an odd thing to say, but the legend says he used a good portion of his fortune to develop hand creams. Rumors start appearing about Matilda sending her bitch son to take the island. However, Stephen still had one castle to take down from Ranulf before he could turn this into a generational beatdown. Just as he finishes taking down Ranulf and strangling him with his silk soft hands, Henry shows up to get the rest of the spanking his mother ran away from. Sadly, we had no idea where he would show up, so the plan chosen was to just flood the island with knights and be prepared for anything. 
The question was quickly answered by his two-pronged assault in the south, just in time for the arriving heavy cavalry of Stephen. The fight is brutal for Henry, with most of his bitch-ass army getting annihilated with not much resistance, and quickly the name of the game became Norman Witch Hunt. Sadly, Henry also got the memo, and a lot of time is wasted hunting down the remaining soldiers. Like seriously, you declare war on me, strand your army on my beaches, and decide to hide from me. I know they came from France, but even in World War II, they mounted resistance. On a desperate last attack, his army comes from my dungeon, just to get crushed by an immobile tower before the cavalry could arrive to relieve the siege. Harder, I didn't even want these lands. Such a sore loser. And just like always, no free play for this guy, and we end the anarchy in a painful 1 hour 38 minutes and 14 seconds. I don't know about you, but looking at anarchy failing just makes me plain sad. And sadness brings me an unquenchable thirst. Perhaps our sponsor for today can fix this issue for us. <coughs> I should not have eaten that flight attendant's ass. I got this awful taste in my mouth now. Oh, you just never learn, do you? Here, this always fixes the problem for me. Oh yeah, that hits the spot. Thank you so much to our sponsors for making this possible. Alright, we have now cosplayed as Romans and fought the worst anarchy to ever plague the British Isles. Only one destination remains for us. I know, I know, but it will be worth it. So put on your pirate hat and take off your left eye, because it's pirating time. And it's heaps of gold we're going for. 40,000 of those to be more precise. But it's a naval scenario, so let's see how much fun this can actually be. Right off the bat, we have Drake explaining how superior his flagship is, and then some other bullshit I didn't read about how the tiny ship can convert enemies. Like what we did with the galley, that I didn't get footage of the conversion. There are plenty of marooned allies all over the Caribbean, and plenty of Spanish colonies to dig our claws under gold, and enemies to shoot at with our massive ballistas. How you are supposed to pillage and plunder these islands is not very well explained in the beginning, but we sail around making new friends and getting new sailors for the Pasha. Also walking around deserted parts of the islands, because why not? I imagine it must be a paradise there, and our troops also deserve the rest. The Spanish slowly start catching up to our shenanigans, but in no time the swan boards the ship and they realize it's better to serve England. With a much bigger army and navy, we storm the first Spanish settlement off the coast of... I don't know? Is this Puerto Rico? We'll call it Puerto Rico. And nothing happens, even after we destroy their towers. And we meet some former slaves, who promptly join us against the Spanish because fuck Spain in this particular case. It's not very well known, or at least it doesn't seem to be, that Spain and Portugal have been getting off quite easy when it comes to the slavery issue. Sure buddy, we'll save your wife, let me just finish my rant here. Or at least when compared to the United States, Brazil for example had 5.5 million slaves, or almost 50% of all the slaves brought to the new world. Ah, sick, it was Puerto Rico we plundered. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. The US had 388,000 slaves brought there, or about 70% of Brazil's. So why aren't we going to Portugal and torching their shit and rioting for this? It's also fun to see that the Pope outlawed Portuguese and Spanish slave trading in 1639, but they only stopped a good 200 years later, when Britain forced their hand. You know, Britain, the second biggest slave trader in the New World? Yeah, tell them, Drake, show who's boss in the Caribbean. I will stop talking about this now, because this is way too sensitive a topic for someone like me to talk about. Well, we sail some narrow rivers and find more lost maroons to be rescued from the tyranny of Spain and the jungle, and to be used as cannon fodder for Drake. Meanwhile, we continue poking the Spanish colonies and rescuing beach sailors until we stumble upon a treasure ship. We sink the escort and the swan does its conversion job, so we can... sink the ship? Fine by me, one last Spanish vessel to deal with. By the shore, our troops start exploring the continent and raining lead on the unprepared Spanish soldiers. A threatening tone, nothing more inviting than that. We take a few steps south and find some burros filled with silver. The 40k necessary for the objective seems like a lot, but they are filthy rich here. Each little outpost is paying out in the thousands. And some islands can be cleared just by sheer persistence of the ships, like Santiago. On land, we continue finding more freed slaves, and we even find that guy's lost wife just lost on a beach with two other dudes. I don't know if the map is just small or what, but just across the water is a massive Spanish fort, apparently one filled with golden slaves, so we start scouting for a way inside. By land seems impossible, and by the dock seems like a trap, but bombard towers protect the other side, so we send the swan to convert yet another unsuspecting ship and pull a D-Day on the fort without a care in the world. We should have probably gone with some care in the world. Drake escapes by the skin of his teeth, and we decide to abandon this place for the time being. 
we pick up the rest of our buddies and sail on to liberate more islands from their gold and to capture more defenseless treasure ships. I feel it's a bit wasteful to scuttle the galleons when we are using war galleys, but we don't have time to question Drake's methods. After all, he was the third man to spin around the globe. That gives his method some credit. The Pasha meets a bombard galleon and retreats to plan an assault while the army explores the island. The Swan goes in first to try and take the bombard, but issues within the crew as to how the assault would take place leave the ship confused and the little Swan barely escapes the bottom of the ocean, forcing it to retreat to the shore, just to be ambushed by yet another Spanish bombard. The rest of the fleet rushes in to help, just to realize the ambush is much bigger and a full-fledged fight starts just outside of Cuba. The recently captured bombard is instantly sunk, and after a painful and costly fight, Drake comes out on top, with an extra treasure ship captured. I'm not gonna lie, I thought I was gonna lose her, but we're over 60% of the goal. We continue raising through Cuba while the ships get fixed, and after searching the jungle for a while, Cuba is properly plundered and all its gold loaded into the Pasha. The troops board once again and we set sail towards Aztec territory. Such an honorable man he is. Don't mind us, fellas, just passing by to give Quetzalcoatl a bit of spanking. The map is gorgeous in this scenario, 1010. We arrive at another little outpost under the usual fire, but nothing out of the ordinary and through Hilo bites the dust. We continue inland, the usual on the life of a pirate, raiding, sacking, pillaging. This has been one of the coolest scenarios of the new DLC without a doubt, but fuck me it's hard to find what to talk about when the whole thing is just killing conquistadors, sacking villages and freeing slaves. Ooh, another mighty sea led spitters. Yoink. Perfect place to capture a bombard galleon, just outside the fortress from earlier. Did you guys miss me? I didn't have to do this, but the spite man, the spite. Fortress liberated, and we are just a few shackles away from the goal. Yet another camp is found, and thanks to our new little toy, the biggest threat is dealt without issues, and this one goes on to capture the final treasure ship. Sadly, beating the plundering target doesn't end the scenario instantly, so we push for some more shenanigans on the Spanish in the camp. The fight is easy and one-sided, and I realize I entered free play. Fuck that. And the plundering ends in 1 hour, 19 minutes and 31 seconds. And there it is, the whole English saga of the new DLC. I know the last scenario is a bit all over the place, but I really had no idea what to say for most of what was happening. All three scenarios are pretty solid, Vortigern is an outstanding piece of history, Stephen was pure chaos, and Drake is about punishing the Spanish, zero complaints from me. The partial time now stands at 198 hours, 24 minutes and 1 second, and we are just probably one scenario away from the 200 hour mark. So let's make it count, and leave our mark again in the new world. Carl Zephany just set sails.